The Bible says in verse 44, it says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field in his excitement. The Bible says he was excited when he found it. He discovered that. And what does the Bible say? He was excited. When me and you discovered Christ, we were excited. And if you've been serving God for more than 10 years, where is your excitement now? Because the kingdom of God is to be excited. There's supposed to be a joy about it. See, Jesus wants to be discovered so that you can be delivered. Jesus wants to be discovered so that me and you can be delivered. That means that, man, when we find Jesus, we find freedom. And I can't find freedom until I find Jesus. And when I find Jesus, I got to stay with Jesus because that's the only way through this. He wants to deliver you, church. When you came into this room with your problems, we serve a God that can set you free today. He wants you healed. He wants you whole. He wants the best for you, church. But it requires a joy. Say, God, I, I am excited. David, the reason why David was a man after God's own heart, can I tell you something, church? He, was, he wanted God so bad, he was excited for the presence of God. He lived for it. He slept and he woke up for the presence of God. The book of Psalms, he wrote a lot of the Psalms. He had his problems, but what? He always went back to the joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I mean, it's not the joy of your job. It's not the joy of your friends. It's not the joy of the music you listen to. No, no, the joy of the Lord is our strength. When you are feeling like you can't and you're on, 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 on E, on, you're empty on the tank, get to the joy of the Lord. Get back. Ponder on his promises. Ponder on his goodness. Thank him. On, if you went to th uh, Tuesday prayer, what are we talking about? Being thankful. Giving thanks. You don't always feel like giving thanks. I don't always feel like giving thanks. There are nights where I don't sleep much. I don't feel like thanking God in the morning. I feel like sleeping more. And I feel like complaining. And I have to shift my attitude to say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I'll never forget uh, a couple of years ago on our 21 days of prayer uh, and fasting. We do this every year in January. We're going to do it this year. But I remember in this church, actually, we were 21 days of prayer and fasting. And there was a day that I was like, I didn't want to be in prayer. I was dealing with some issues and I was just like, I just was not in the mood. I didn't really want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to, I was like looking at the, at the clock on my phone. I was on Instagram. I was just like, man, I'm just going to pass the time. Just get this over with. Listen to my dad say what he has to say and amen and leave. But I remember the Lord, the Holy Spirit was dealing with me. And I stopped myself and I said, you know what, God, this, I can't be like this. I, I, forgive me that I'm acting like such an, an idiot, for lack of a better word. That I'm, that I'm wasting my time when I could be in your presence seeking you and receiving from you. So I remember I, asked, I, I went back to the joy of the Lord. And I literally, I said it, I remember, I remember most of my prayer was repeating that verse. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. Can I tell you something? About the 10th time, I began to feel a difference in me. And it went from the joy of the Lord is my strength to me praising God and to me praying. Church, we have to get to that place. We can't let outside circumstances disrupt what God wants to do in your life. We can't, we can't let outside circumstances disrupt what God's trying to deliver from your life. We can't. We have to get to a place where we have to enjoy the presence of God because he's meant to be enjoyed. It's an enjoyment to be in his presence. It's an enjoyment to be a son and a daughter. It's an enjoyment to read his word. It's an enjoyment to pray. God, we are designed, we were created to be blessed and to be a blessing. We were created to enjoy, not endure. Amen? Everybody getting this? Yeah? Cool. Last one is this. The kingdom of God is viewed as what? Great value with great reward. The kingdom of God is viewed as great value with great reward. If you go back to verse 45, it says this. It says, again, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. I started, I, I was interested, so I looked up, what does it mean? What, how does that pearl work and how is it created? And this is what I found. The center of a pearl is a grain of sand or something else that works as an irritant. Sand gets into a clam and the clam responds to this irritation by secreting a fluid that coats the sand, reducing its capacity to irritate the organism. Layer after layer of the fluid cakes the sand and over time a pearl is created. Something seemingly small and worthless creates a change that becomes great value. It becomes a change that becomes great value. That's why pearls are such a valuable thing. Oh my gosh, when someone gets a pearl necklace, it's a big deal. Like in movies, the grandma gives their pearls to their grandkids and all that stuff. But the Bible is saying that the key in his heaven is something eternal. It has an eternal value. It's something that is, that is worth so much to me that we're, re- we're willing to leave everything for it. We're willing to leave everything for it. We're willing to surrender everything for it. That's why Jesus, when he challenges the rich young ruler, he had a hard time leaving everything. Because the things were his God and not Christ. The things when God, Jesus was just trying to challenge him. Jesus, actually Jesus was just testing him. He wasn't even trying to really get him to sell. He was trying to see where his heart was. But the Bible says that the rich young ruler, what does he do? He gets away, he leaves sad because he had too much stuff that he was attached to. But the Bible is saying that the kingdom of God is something that I'm willing to leave. I'm willing to leave friends. I'm willing to leave influence. I'm willing to leave whatever it is so that I can get the greatest thing, and that's Christ. I'm willing to leave. I'm willing to leave attitudes. I'm willing to leave habits. I'm willing to surrender whatever it is so that I can have the most valuable thing, and that's him. Peter said it when Jesus was telling him, when he was challenging him, he said, Father, we've left everything for you. We left everything for you. And you have to understand, church, the great value comes with great word. It's a great value. The power of God, who Jesus is, is such a value that it comes with rewards. But you have to understand that what are you willing to surrender so that you can gain from Christ? What are you willing to give up? If you're saying, God, I want everything, then what are you willing to leave behind so that you can experience this great reward? That's why Jesus said it. He challenged the people. He said, take up your cross and follow me. For some people, when, he, when, he, when they heard that, they were like, man, Jesus, you're asking for a lot. And they were missing out on the beauty of, of surrender. They were missing out on, man, I'm giving up a lot, but I'm gaining so much more. I'm gaining so much more. I'm gaining freedom, and I'm gaining miracles, and I'm gaining advancement and provision. I'm gaining more than I'm losing. And so you have to change your mindset and say, Father, what is it in my life that's taking place that I need to let go of so that I could gain from you? What are things in my life that I need to let go of so that I could have more of you? What am I willing to do? And the kicker is you will know what you value most when it's asked of you. Do you value what God says or do you value what someone else wants? Do you value what God's leading you to do or do you value your feelings more? That's where you know where your treasure is. In fact, the Bible talks about treasure. It says this, and now don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. It's not saying, here's the thing. It's not saying that you can't have nice things, but nice things can't have you. Because the moment that nice things have you, 
they become your God. And you become a slave to those things. Whether it's material, whether it's a relationship, whatever it is that you treasure more than God will become your God. And you will become a slave to it. And God didn't call you to be a slave. God didn't call you to be a slave to it. He didn't call you to be a slave to, to insecurities. He didn't call you to be a slave and be bonded and broken by things. No, no, he, he called you to be free. But I can't be free if Jesus is not my God. Church, like I said from the very beginning, when we are feeling unfulfilled in our life, we have to check where our perspective is. When I am feeling unfulfilled, where is my perspective? Where is my faith? Where is my view of who God is? If you're feeling unfulfilled today, check yourself. You got to check yourself, church. Are your views disproportioned? Are your views out of sight? Are you looking through the wrong lens instead of looking through the word of God and through faith? Are you looking through your emotions and your disappointments? Because that'll mess with how you experience the kingdom of God. And can I say something? The kingdom of God is for everybody. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus presence who Jesus is that is everything to us and God wants to wants you to live out there in freedom and in purpose that is the vision of our church so that people from all walks of life would find freedom and purpose in Christ if you don't know what the vision of our church is that's our vision so that people from all walks of life would find freedom and purpose in Christ. Find freedom. Not so that people will be bound. Not so that people will be hurt. No, that would be fine. Freedom. They would live with purpose in Christ. We need, we need a kingdom view. A kingdom view.